Good afternoon and welcome. Today is the 13th day of January. I hope all of us are getting used to writing 2021 on all of our correspondence. Just want to remind you that those looking for offering envelopes, all of those have been put in the mail. It was easier to distribute them that way than wait for people to be in church. So should be in your mailbox in the next day or two. Want to remind you that we are back to having in-person worship here in the cathedral, Sunday mornings, 8.30 and again at 10 o'clock. We hope to resume having an online Evensong service beginning in February. For those wishing to attend on Sunday mornings, again, seating is limited because of health restrictions. So we would ask you to go on our website. You will find there under the information tab, the information for the Eventbrite program, which enables you to reserve seating for yourself or family members. If you have any issues with that or difficulties in connecting, just call the office. We're happy to walk you through that. Along with Sundays at 8.30 and 10 o'clock, we also have in-person worship Wednesday mornings, 7.30 a.m. in the morning for early risers. Wednesday at lunchtime, we have an in-person meditation program. And on Fridays at lunchtime, noon, a Book of Common Prayer worship service. The Wednesday morning and Friday services are here in the cathedral. The Wednesday meditation is in the Great Hall. At the moment, because numbers are relatively low in terms of persons attending, it's not necessary to reserve in advance for those. You can just come and sign in once you're here. We also want to remind you that meditation online is back up and running again. That uses the Zoom format, so those wishing to attend that Thursday evenings, 6.30, please send an email request to prayasyoucan3, the number three, at gmail.com. Also, a four-week online series on various ways of praying begins next Monday, January 18th, and will continue through February the 8th. Topics for that prayer workshop series includes work as prayer, our work or vocation as a prayerful response to God's call, reading as prayer, a way or method of reading scriptures or other spiritual writings as a guide for spiritual growth, discipleship, and fostering community, the art as prayer using images rather than words to express the prayer of our hearts, and hands-on prayer, making and using an Anglican rosary, a tactile aid to prayer. If you'd like to attend those workshops, again, that uses the Zoom format. The same email address, prayasyoucan3 at gmail.com, and please put in the subject line, pray as you can. Today, as a poem, I turn to one of the great Irish poets, William Butler Yeats. Yeats was born in Sandymount, Ireland, June 13th, 1865, just a month after the American Civil War ended. And I note that only to add some context to the state of the world at the time of his birth. Yeats grew up and was educated there and in London. In 1867, the family had moved to England to aid their father, John, in furthering his career as an artist. He was a Protestant and member of the Anglo-Irish community. He studied poetry from an early age when he became fascinated by Irish legends and the occult. Reading from his Wikipedia article, in 1997, his biographer R. F. Foster observed that Napoleon's dictum that to understand the man you have to know what was happening in the world when he was 20 is manifestly true in the life of Yeats. His childhood and young adulthood were overshadowed by the power shift away from the minority Protestant ascendancy. The 1880s saw the rise of Charles Stuart Parnell and the Home Rule Movement. The 1890s saw the momentum of nationalism while the Catholics became prominent around the turn of the century. These developments had a profound effect on his poetry and his subsequent explorations of Irish identity. 
He began writing his first works when he was only 17, heavily influenced by Percy Shelley. Yeats had a lifelong interest in mysticism, spiritualism, occultism, and astrology. He read extensively on those subjects throughout his life and became a member of the paranormal research organization called the Ghost Club. While Yeats' early poetry drew heavily on Irish myth and folklore, his later work was engaged with more contemporary issues and his style underwent a dramatic transformation. He died on the 28th of January in 1939. In 1923, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. The poem I've chosen, chosen is one that came to mind in the midst of the disturbing images in Washington, D.C. last week. A poem written by Yeats in his lifetime during the unfolding of the First World War with the title, The Second Coming. In an article published in the Paris Review in April 7, 2015, Author Nick Tabor notes, quote, Yeats began writing this poem in January 1919 in the wake of the First World War, the Russian Revolution, and the political turmoil in his native Ireland. But the first stanza captures more than just political unrest and violence. Its anxiety concerns the social ills of modernity, the rupture of traditional family, societal structures, the loss of collective religious faith, and with it the collective sense of purpose, the feeling that the old rules no longer apply and there's nothing to replace them." Unquote. Yeats believed that the world was on the threshold of some kind of apocalyptic revelation. So here's the poem titled The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. From those rather somber words, let me introduce you to perhaps a more uplifting and hope-filled vision of what is and what can be. With a song originally written and sung by Benny King, but performed by an organization called Playing for Change. Long before this pandemic introduced us to Zoom or Google Meet or Teams or Hangouts and online music collaborations, you know, the kind where you see dozens of faces or singers on a screen or the individual frames of musicians in different rooms magically connected to produce a song. Mark Johnson and Whitney Cronkey, both music producers, came up with the idea of connecting the world through music. In 2002, they co-founded a nonprofit organization called the Playing for Change Foundation. As their website explains, they believe that music has the power to break down boundaries and overcome distances between people. Our primary focus, they say, is to record and film musicians performing in their natural environments and combine their talents and cultural power in innovative videos called Songs Around the World. 
Mark Johnson was walking in Santa Monica, California when he heard the voice of a street artist, Roger Ridley, singing Stand By Me. It was this experience that sent Playing for Change on its mission to connect the world through music. In 2002, with producer Enzo Bono, they traveled around the world to places like New Orleans, Barcelona, South Africa, India, Nepal, the Middle East, and Ireland. Using mobile recording equipment, they recorded local musicians performing the same song, interpreted in their own style, and then wove them together into one. In 2011, Playing for Change Foundation established an annual Playing for Change Day with the goal to, quote, unite a global community through the power of music to effect positive social change, unquote. In 2014, the Playing for Change Day consisted of over 400 events in 60 different countries. It is now held annually on the Saturday nearest the United Nations International Day of Peace. In 2019, Playing for Change Foundation was awarded the Polar Music Prize. So do a search for Playing for Change, Stand By Me. The song, as I mentioned at the outset, was originally performed in 1961 by American singer-songwriter Ben E. King. According to King, the title is derived from and inspired by a spiritual first written by Sam Cooke and J.W. Alexander called Stand By Me Father, recorded by the Soul Stirrers with Johnny Taylor singing the lead. It is based on the words of comfort and hope found in the opening lines of the 46th Psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake, in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. In 2012, the song's royalties were estimated to have topped $22.8 million, making it the sixth highest earning song of its era, and 50% of those royalties were paid out to Benny King. In 2014, King's original version was inducted into the National Recording Registry by the Library of Congress. There have been over 400 different versions recorded of the song. So, playing for change, stand by me. An example of the power music has to break down the barriers that divide us and unite us with a common vision and purpose. As a closing prayer, I've chosen one I've shared before and one well known by people of all faiths and no faiths. Perhaps apart from the Lord's Prayer, it may be one of the most recognized prayers. Attrib attributed to the 13th century founder of the religious order that bears his name, here is the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Keep in touch, stay safe, and keep the faith until we meet again.